Welcome back to the Knockout Lounge. This is your boy Bruce Lee. I'm going to try to make this, this one a little bit quicker because I'm having battery malfunctions. The juices is running out of my batteries. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and make my prediction for the Saul Alvarez and Ryan Rose fight uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. This is for the WBC Junior Middleweight Championship. Uh, Saul Alvarez is rated number 9 by Ring Magazine with Ryan Rose number 4. Saul comes into this fight 36-0-1 and, and uh, Ryan Rose comes in as 45-4 and 4 with Rose's last fight coming in December 2010. Uh, so he's had a, like a 7 month layoff and, and Saul Alvarez's last fight was about 3 months ago when he captured the vacant WBC uh, Junior Middleweight Championship. Uh, back here about uh, three months ago. For Saul, uh, he's going to try to bang Rose out, uh, try to get inside. Rose is the bigger bigger fighter. Saul will try to get inside to bang him out. Uh, quick quick hits, getting in and out. Uh, Ryan Rose will more than likely try to use his height and reach to his advantage and keep, keep him away with the jab. But I think uh, Saul will go ahead and get inside and and, and bust them up a little bit. We'll see what the youngster is made out of. Remember, he's still young and coming up. But I think he'll go ahead and take this fight with a unanimous decision. It might even be a majority decision, but I'm going with a unanimous decision for Kennelou. Coming up, uh, Ryan Rose's last loss was back in 2008 uh, to Gary Lockett. Uh, so he, he's been on a several fight winning streak for the past three years. Should be a pretty pretty decent fight, but I still think Saul won't have any problems with Ryan. Uh, he, you know, Saul is still a young fighter, up and coming. So this should be another learning experience while he has a strap around his waist. Uh, but mark it down, Saul Alvarez by unanimous decision. I also want to get to the Friday Night Fights main event, uh, Udell Johnson versus Torres. Uh, Udell Johnson is a, one of those up and coming fighters. So he had to take this fight basically as a learning, learning type deal, because uh, he is a several instances he could put Torres away, uh, and, and a lot of those rounds because Torres was flinging out wild shots, and all you that have to do was counter punch. He was hitting him, uh, Johnson was hitting Torres with a straight left all day, all fight long. Uh, he got the unanimous decision victory in the ten, uh, went the whole uh, ten rounds. Uh, but yeah, this is an opportunity for him to learn. Uh, I'm pretty sure once he go back and watch tape and see what he what he did right and what he didn't do, or I should say what he could do more of, you know, he'll pick that up for the future fights. Um, it basically bored me, I'm not to death, but yeah, it was so much I had to turn about the sixth round. I'm like, ah, I can't take any more of this. Uh, but it was one of those fights that had to happen for the cat to learn. I mean, we can't can't stop that. They have to learn. You can't just throw them into the fire pan and expect them to learn something and, and win everything. I uh, also want to touch on uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. He captured the middleweight, uh, actually yeah, the middleweight, <laughs> WBC middleweight championship on yesterday. Uh, that poses my question for the week. Uh, how long do you think top rank can keep, uh, keep Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Bottled up before the bottom comes out. How long do you think they can keep him protected? I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe one to two more years they can keep him protected. If that, uh, let me know what you think. Leave comments. How long do you think uh, Junior has before the bottom falls out? Because, you know, he's nothing like his father was. You know, we can't compare him. That would be wrong to Junior to compare him to his father. But I still think he's a protected fighter. And the bottom will fall out. I call about the next year or two. So let me know what you think on that. Because he's not ready for the likes of Sergio Martinez in his division. Uh, Sergio Martinez, the beast from Argentina. He's not ready. He's not ready. But he will get his phones in the next year or two, in my opinion. Uh, since we're on the, the uh, middleweight division in the WBC, I just wanted to throw out uh, the top five contenders for the WBC middleweight championship. Uh, we have number one, Alfred Angelo, Angelo from Mexico. Uh, we have P. Will, Paul Williams from the United States. We have the guy Ryan Rose here that's fighting for the title in the next couple of weeks at number three. 
And this this uh, person is ranked number four. I know I'm a butcher his name. As you can laugh, I don't care. But this this guy's from Armenia, and his name is Vanish Martisian, something like that. Martisian. You can look it up. <laughs> but it's Vanish Martisian from Armenia. And number five, I don't get how the heck this man is still on the uh, anybody's ranking list. It's for Antonio Morgachito from Mexico. Yeah, the guy that Pacquiao just battered and bruised. Uh, here, you know, he came back and was a junior middleweight to fight um, Pacquiao for the WBC junior middleweight championship. But how this guy still ran by any organization, I don't know. I mean, he still could be ranked, but not the top five. Come on, man. Not the top five and really not the top ten these days. Um, yeah, but anyway, those are the top five WBC middleweight fighters uh, coming up. And I just want to uh, let you know, since we uh, talked about old Saul and Ryan, the uh, number one and number two in the uh, Ring Magazine's rankings in the junior middleweight division, uh, they could fight for a little championship. Uh, if the fight were to be made, it's Carmen Centron and, and Miguel Cotto. Uh, those two, they're ranked number one. Miguel is ranked number one. Carmen is number two. Uh, if they get it all, this will be for the linear championship in the junior middleweight division. As you know, their title is vacated right now. Uh, they have no champion, but for that, that title to be held, uh, those two need to go ahead at some point in time, meet up and get it done. But um, Carmen Centron has a fight coming up in July against uh, Molina. Uh, Molina, he's been on a couple of Friday night fights trying to get back up in the junior middleweight division, but he has his opportunity to fight a big, big time opponent, a big name fighter, and Kermit Centron come up in July. Uh, it's a step up for him. This opportunity he was looking for, uh, but now he's going to get it. Uh, but I think Kermit will go ahead and take care of him easily. No, no biggie on that one. Uh, but that's all. That's all your boy had for you today. That's all I have for you. And let me know on that question, how long do you think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. could be protected before his bottom falls out? And I will holler at y'all later. Peace out.